in this video let's see what is functional programming and how that is uh, used in the swift programming language functional programming is not a uh, programming syntax it's just a programming paradigm uh, which is uh, basically useful for uh, uh, getting the immutability uh, which helps in the uh, multi-threading environment so let's see for example i have a function add two values and I am taking two values so if I do calculation and if I return the value then this if I say add of course this function is able to calculate the sum of two values but uh, the problem here is uh, this is accessing the global values and doing the mathematical calculation so this function I cannot reuse it so in, in functional programming uh, language how we do that is instead of this function accessing directly the global values which are mutable which is very dangerous when we call this in a multi-threaded environment so what we do is we do a function where uh, it's not depending on uh, outside values it just take the parameters and what it does is it does the sum and returns the sum now pretty much the function is doing the same but instead of accessing the values outside what it is doing is it is just operating on its parameters which is x and y so this function i can use it anywhere it is independent of the global values now it also uh, i'm sorry here it is right now it also generates the same output it is the sum of a and b it is it is giving so this is a function uh, it's this is a function and we in, in function programming language the basic uh, uh, we, we we call it as a pure function uh, any function in the function programming world is a uh, is a pure function this we call it as a pure function why because it is not depending on any outside values and it is independent of anything like this if you write any function which take the parameters and does something from you, you know, something uh, uh, for us it is called a uh, it, it's called a pure function so if we can look at it uh, there is no mutability in it also so why because we are not accessing any outside values so we're just taking the parameters and doing our calculation so in that way it is thread safe and in that way our functional programming is also thread safe and uh, and also uh, it, it is not uh, if we can look at it it is not changing any outside uh, variables or parameters and that's why it is independent and this we can use it as a reusable function anywhere and like this if you can see in the swift language there are so many uh, uh, functional programming related stuff like sort like uh, like we do map so sort sort means it, it sorts something so it, it's it's a it's a it's a function it is not depending on the values outside or something whatever you pass it it sorts and gives it to you And all the all the objects in a functional programming world are immutable. Uh, the key uh, the uh, which is a key concept in the multi-threaded environment. So with functional implementation, our code is uh, very safe. And also, uh, uh, this functional programming focuses heavily on on the rec recursions instead instead of on the loops. Let me explain it. Loops are dangerous. Why? Because they are uh, immutable. So in in a way. Uh, if you are doing functional programming in Swift means we go with more lets instead of writing where's where is a mutable state which is dangerous in a multi-threaded environment for example let me show that with an example for example I I am writing a program which is a which, which is in an imperative way that means I'm, I'm, I'm giving the program what needs to be done step by step which is an imperative way instead of what it uh, what to do instead of I'm, I'm writing how to do instead of what to do for i in one like 
let's say I'm adding this. If you can see, total is modified inside uh, inside the loop, uh, which embraces uh, which embraces clearly the uh, mutability. So let's say let's say, let's call it as sum. So if I have to see the sum, so this this is an imperative imperative programming, which is which is we're telling how to do instead of what to do this is how we need to do but in the world of functional programming let's say in the functional programming which is strongly against the loops why because it is mutable outside value we are mutating it in functional programming it mainly it mainly suggests recursions in recursions we we eliminate this mutability so with respect the same sum from 1 to 10 how, how we can do is let's say let's make it total total sum total sum and total sum now 1 to 1 to 10 it is 55 this is achieved using loops which, which are dangerous in the same way functional programming we take a function what we need is a is a sum so what we need here we need a start index why because you are starting from we are starting from one and you need a end, end index and what is the end value that you need and total So it returns an int value. So what we can write if start is greater than n, we return the we return the total. Let me use the same terminology total sum. We return the total sum. If not, if not, what we do is we do the recursion, the recursion of the function the recursion of the function again I do the same the start value here whatever I got from here this is the recursion within the function I am calling the same function using this to avoid loops I call I do my functional programming now if I have to call it I call start here one starting from 1 I need 10 I'm not whatever I have used in the loop I'm doing it here and the total sum is the total sum initial value is 0 0 I am passing now this total sum has given the 55 now, now with my functional programming it should also give me the same this sum should uh, calling this sum function should give me the value as 55 sorry this is total sum uh, addition I forgot total sum plus start I need to total this is total sum if start greater than n I am returning the total sum sum start n when calculating the total sum it is total sum plus uh, the start value now if I run it and one more wrong I have done this start plus one also I should do why because every time I need to increment this is what we are doing this is what the for loop does so I am running it this should give the same answer as total sum if you can look at it the same for loop what we have done we are passing the start value end value and the, and the total sum value 
if uh, if it reaches like in the for loop we are returning the total sum value calculated if not we are doing the recursion in the recursion we are incrementing the start place one which which the for loop does and the total sum we are calculating uh, calculating as totals total sum plus i the same calculation what we are doing is we are doing it here but we are doing it in a functional uh, functional programming approach let's give it some time see it it has uh, got the same value with uh, this is with the imperative programming uh, using the loops uh, with the change of state which is uh, very dangerous this is with the functional programming where we have we have taken the advantage of rec rec recursions here if you can see uh, uh, there is no uh, um, mutab mutability here we are not mutating anything here we are just calculating the sum the, the so the same total sum we are adding it to the start value and calling the function again so this is thread safe in, in the functional programming it highly recommends rec recursions and higher order functions which we discussed in one of the videos is a C terminology in the functional programming world and uh, this is how functional programming uh, is mainly focused on mathematical calculations like everything is a pure function and you it's it's like what to do whether it's whether it's some sort what, what to do instead of how to do instead of giving the sequence of steps it's like what to do now this so in terms of swift language as we discussed uh, functional programming means uh, using lets instead of where's when dealing with the data uh, it, so the key practice uh, in function programming is breaking the code so everything should be uh, written as a function a function should have only one purpose so if, if it is doing multiple tasks then we need to separate them into multiple functions it's like a single responsibility principle the unit of composition for this approach we call it as a function and the goal of the function is to avoid changing state or mutating values outside of its scope it should not have any changing state and it should not access any values outside of its course so it's it's a declarative approach if you can see the differences between imperative and declarative approach uh, in, in the imperative approach we focus on uh, steps what, uh, what what the computer should do the step by step process whereas uh, in, in the declarative approach the focus is more more on what the computer should do uh, rather than how it should do it, how it should how it should do it okay and uh, and as it is not entertaining any immu any uh, immutability it is uh, it is uh, thread safe whereas uh, loops needs mutability recursion does not need it that, that is why F function programming relies on uh, uh, recursions so this pure functions uh, these pure functions mainly simplify concurrency since they do not access any shared resources or outside values so there is no risk of race conditions or uh, uh, deadlocks when dealing with the parallel uh, parallel threads or so that is why the, the functional programming is high, highly recommended and this is how we can have uh, uh, we can have functional programming in the swift swift language for example if you are doing something like func uh, call call service and you are you are calling the you are calling the service and you are and you are parsing the data and you are updating local db and you are reloading UI. UI. If you're doing something like this, uh, but if you're doing something like this, uh, something like this, but then it, it it doesn't work usually. Why? Because obviously it needs to access the outside values, global values for doing any of these operations. So, for that reason, what you need to do is you should have call service function. You would get the data after that you is you you should be having past data with the data that that you would get and after that you would uh, update local db and then with the with the data some day with, with the data parts data maybe in this you should be calling parse data 
male couple something and then you should have fun reload ui with the data available so this is how you should be writing pure functions in the function programming so that this should be reusable this should be reusable this should be in a position to reuse it it doesn't it doesn't need to access the global data so you pass the data okay if this is the data it updates the ui which comes from single responsibility principle once you pass the data okay then you need to upload update local local db your code data or sql anything correct so this is the functional programming world in in this way it is easy to test and it is thread safe and it, it can and it is reusable so here we are here here anyway we are saying what uh, what to do instead of how to do so you need to parse it update local db you need to update the local db i so i hope this post is useful thank you